Geysers are fascinating natural phenomena. Three million people go to Yellowstone, they watch geysers erupt, and they all ask why. And we don't know the answer to that question. To make a geyser you need heat, you need fluid, and just the right geology. So they're very uncommon features. And the fact that they're uncommon tells us that there's something special or unusual about how they work. Why do they erupt regularly, or sometimes not regularly? And this is all controlled by the pressure and temperature underground. But it's a little bit unpredictable, and then it just happens. And people can watch geysers erupt time and time again. They'll spend hours and hours just watching and waiting. The key measurement for us to make is to measure pressure and temperature within the geyser, and also to see what the inside looks like. At Yellowstone National Park, we're limited to making measurements outside of the geyser. We measure uh, the ground motion with things called seismometers to record the ground vibrating. A variety of measurements to look at how the ground is deforming and how fast material comes out of the geyser. In Chile, we're allowed to put instruments inside the geyser as well. So we use the same types of measurements. We leave the equipment inside the geyser for five or six straight days. With the video camera, we can see where the steam is coming from to all the nooks and crannies in which steam can accumulate, the convoluted pathways through which the water has to move. And that inspires the lab models that we built here in Berkeley. So at the bottom of the geyser, we have a hot plate. It's kind of like a stove top, and it's heating the geyser. In the earth, this corresponds to the hot rock deep underneath the ground. And heat is transferred from the hot rock into the water, into the geyser. And the heat accumulates inside the geyser system. And then at the top here is where uh, water is ejected into the atmosphere. And that's what you see when you go to Yellowstone. One thing we've observed at geysers is two types of eruptions, small ones and big ones. And this bubble trap now helps us understand why we have small and big eruptions. Every now and then a little bubble will leak out the top, and that makes a small eruption that just happened. And eventually all this water gets hot enough that one of those small little eruptions tr turns into a big eruption. When a big eruption happens, everything reaches the boiling temperature. Water at the top, water at the bottom. And as soon as the eruption begins, the pressure everywhere is lowered and the water turns into steam, and then we get a big eruption. It looks like we don't have any consecutive large eruptions. So we need to figure out why, right? why it's so irregular. Today we're measuring the temperature in the bottom and the top of the model, and then the other lines we're looking at are temperature of our heat source and temperature of the surrounding air, just so we can see that our environmental conditions are constant. We leave this model running for hours and hours, sometimes days, you know, come in and check on it every few hours, but what we want to get is a lot of data. We also record video of the model so we can go back and look at different characteristics of the eruption, but temperature is our most important measurement, I think, because it's easy to pick out the big eruptions in a temperature record. There's no eruption at the moment, but we can see these little fluctuations in the uh, top and bottom temperature recordings, and those are the signatures of bubbles rising up through the conduit, and they're transferring heat, and that's a temperature change. So it's exciting to finally make measurements in a geyser and understand what's going on, why the eruptions start, why they end. But there are many things we don't understand. Real geysers are regular. Old Faithful is called Old Faithful because it's regular. The geysers in Chile erupt every 132 seconds, one we studied. It doesn't matter whether it's night or day, cold or warm. So even though we understand many features of how the eruptions work, there's still basic questions that we don't understand. And so hopefully we can go back and make more measurements.